Well, good morning and welcome to Centenary United Methodist Church this morning. It's good to have each and every one of you here with us today. And um, most people are more than far enough away so I can take off my mask and talk to you and, and uh, I'm there. So it's been a pleasure to have our online people with us this morning as well. And um, what a joy it is to gather together online and also in person to worship together our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I just like to mention um, a couple of announcements that um, a collection of our offerings will again be at the exits of each of the sanctuary. You can drop those into the offering place on the way out. Also, we will be having communion later on in our service and and I'll mention it again, too, at that time, but we will be passing out the cups, and then you'll be able to toss those away at also real close at the exits, and there will be little places to throw those away at as well there. Um, also, we continue to have our services on Facebook and YouTube, and it's wonderful when you share those and, and just make a comment, just letting us know that you're watching. We see well over 150 uh, views each and every week and uh, what a blessing it is to know that the Word of God is going forth and the Word of Centenary United Methodist Church and Clarksville United Methodist Church is making an impact around the world. Um, we do have a church council meeting this Tuesday at noon here and, and we'll probably be meeting upstairs so that we can keep the social distancing and have a wonderful time together and decide where we're how we're moving forward with our with our services. Any other announcements that need to be made? That very good. At this time, we'll stand together, and we'll have our call to worship. And I'll read, and we'll read responsively. Welcome this day to a celebration of God's magnificent creation. Welcome this day to a recognition of God's redeeming love. Welcome this day to the joy of God's Holy Spirit of truth and power. Thank you, and you may be seated. Reading some scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another to be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. This is the word of God for the people of God. At this time, we're going to have a special number in um, ministry and music from Juanita and myself this morning. We're going to be singing, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. Thank 
joys and concerns with the Lord and with each other. Are there any joys or concerns you'd like to make known? Yeah. Joanna? So that's Rose Gronemeyer from the village of the Blue Rose passed away this morning. So remember that family there in prayer. Any others? Yes. Okay. Um, Sherry's son, Benjamin, has been deployed uh, to an unknown destination, so let's remember him in prayer. And Drew? Uh, Charlie, obviously, everybody knows about the battle, so we pray for, uh, I ask for prayers to continue, uh, Carl and Chris will work there, but, uh, they love to and be there, so we pray for prayers. So Carly has passed away a couple weeks ago, and just remember, continue to remember the parents and the family there in, in their prayers, and, and, uh, what a courageous battle she had throughout the few months that she was here and shared with her family and parents. Yes, Beth? Yes, it is. It's what a joy to have those that come come back from Florida come back and join us and jump right in and, and uh, be a part of the services. So thank you for being here. Any others this morning? At this time, we will go to the Lord in prayer. We'll have a time of silent prayer while Joanna plays, and then I will close us in prayer. Blessed Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to be with you this morning and be in communion, in fellowship with fellow believers, Lord. What a joy that is to fill our hearts with your presence and the presence of those that are walking this path along with us as we work together and worship together to follow you. And we just pray, Lord, that you'll bless each and every one of us that are here and that are online, Lord. May we find our peace and our solace in you. May we be willing to follow you and live our lives as a testimony to you, Lord. And Lord, we'd like to just lift up at this time those requests that were mentioned this morning, those that were left unspoken that are part of each and every one of our lives, 
And Lord, for the coronavirus that is going on, we just pray, Lord, that you'll keep each and every one of us safe. And that you'll help us, Lord, during these days when so many people are feeling confined, when they're feeling heartbroken, when they're feeling lonely, help us, Lord, that we can reach out and touch those lives. Remember to do that so that we can be a blessing to others and so we can lift them up and they can be a blessing to us. What a joy it is when we talk to those that we have called and reached out to lift them up, that they literally lift us up as well. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And we just pray, Lord, that for each of these requests that you'll be their presence with those that need your touch and that you'll give them the peace that they need, the understanding to know that you are with them and that you are leading their lives as you lead our lives through these difficult days that we face. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And we just praise your name for the wonderful blessings that you send our way. And as we look at these difficult days, we, Lord, still can see the blessings to know that you're with us, that you're beside us, that you're still guiding us, and that all we need to do to receive an additional blessing is to reach out to you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And thank you, Lord, that you're here with us in our service this day. And we just pray, Lord, that as the words and the music goes forth, that you'll speak to our hearts and our hearts will be uplifted through the moving of your spirit, the Holy Spirit that's with us. Lord, we just like to join our voices together as we say the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll have a ministry in music by Joanna.
join up with our wonderful ministry in the song. At this time, we will be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, looking at chapter 28, and let's stand together as we read from God's holy word. Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Our scripture tells us here in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus went to Galilee to meet his disciples at a mountain. This meeting probably would have included more than just the 11 disciples. Galilee is where most of the followers of Jesus were. This could have been the event that Paul wrote about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6, that says, After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. To me, this makes more sense, especially when you read the next verse where it says, they worshipped him, but some doubted. We know that the eleven disciples were not doubters at this time. They had seen Jesus. They had touched his, his wounds from the, from the cross. That comment by Matthew, but some doubted, is one of the countless testimonies of the integrity of the scriptures. The transparent honesty of a statement like this shows that Matthew was not attempting to exclude or cover up facts that might lessen the perfection of such a glorious moment. Even we, when our faith falters at times, we realize that we have not only once to face, peri face periods of doubt, some hesitate at least briefly to fully com commit themselves to the risen Christ. If we refuse to commit to the Lord totally, the Holy Spirit could not enter our hearts and lead us, as it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with your whole heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. This is the desire of our hearts. Stay true to God so that we can live our lives for Christ. I think that the 11 disciples became really excited to hear the words that came from Jesus as he addressed those assembled upon this mountain. There were some major happenings in the life of Jesus and some of his disciples upon a mountain that are recorded in the book of but the Gospel of Matthew. Just to highlight a few of those mentioned, we will all remember the Sermon on the Mount that's found in Matthew chapters 5 through 7. There again, that took place on a mountain. Jesus was transfigured on a mountain with four of his disciples present with him, as we read in Matthew chapter 17. And now Jesus gives the, gives the Great Commission on a mountain here that we just read here in Matthew chapter 28. Let's just go back a moment and think about what the 11 disciples may have heard 
along with maybe the other 500 that were there, but they heard the few words that Jesus spoke. Jesus said, I, in this short little verse, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Now, if I had been one of those 11 disciples, knowing and reading about what these disciples always are saying, you know, what I would have heard is Jesus saying, I am the Messiah. I am in control because God, the Father, has given me control over everything in heaven and everything on earth. The question may have happened right then that was mentioned in Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? That was a very hopeful question on the parts of those disciples. They had looked forward to that time when Jesus would set up his kingdom on earth the time when Israel would once again become the prominence that was in, during the days of David, during the days of King David. And they would be able to run all of Rome out of their nation of Israel. They would once again be rulers of their own selves. They once again would be a nation to be reckoned with in the whole world. They would have control. Jesus would have set up his kingdom. The Messiah would have done that. But Jesus did respond to that question. And the answer was, not at this time. But Jesus provides his followers with objectives and a central task for the church, for each of those disciples that were there, for the disciples that have come following those disciples that have come down from century after century after century, even to today. Jesus gives the task and the goal and the direction for the church to go. For us here today, for you and for me, and for those that will follow us, the same the same task is, is alive for us. And them. And Jesus' words are go. He says, go. Jesus continues his message not only to those there on that mountainside, but to all of his followers down through the centuries, up to you and me today, and to those that will follow in the years to come. When I think about the disciples, I'm thinking, my goodness. Can you wait just a minute, Jesus? Hold on just a minute. We remember back when Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, it says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus was following, calling his disciples to come and follow him. The 12 and now the 11 followed Jesus each step of the way, plus so many others in this group of the mountain there in Galilee that have gathered together. Now Jesus is saying, go? Go on my own? Where am I to go? You know, Jesus, I like following you. There is less risk to failure when you are leading me. I'm sure you have been at a time in your life when the same word was given to you. Remember that time maybe when you as a or one of your children was involved in some sporting event or some other activity that you were going to be placed up in front of a group of people? The coach, your teacher, tells the, each player to go. Go and perform that task that you, was, that you have practiced. You are prepared. You have all the training needed. You know your assignment. Now is the time to step up. You've been looking forward to this moment your whole life. Do your part 
and all your dreams will come true. You will be a champion. Jesus said, let's go. The coaches say, let's go. Your teachers say, let's go. You know what you need to do. Jesus, if I go, how will I know which is the right path to turn to when I come to that intersection? When I come to that choice between the three doors, which one do I come to? There comes a time in our life when we must make the decision. Am I or am I not going to follow Jesus? Are we going to follow Jesus or are we going to go our own way? Paul the Apostle tells Jesus' followers in, in Corinthians um, chapter 13, verse 11, it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. When we make the decision to follow Jesus and he sends us to go, we do not go alone. God will go with us. What more could you ask for? Do you still want more? Pastor Dave brought you to a time when I feel, can I go on from here? I just need that little assurance that little extra boost to continue on. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the, Lord, and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God's grace of free forgiveness and cleansing comes to us through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ because of the love of God towards each and every one of us. Because of this grace, the Holy Spirit enables us to have fellowship with God and with each other. All three members of the Trinity have a part in our salvation. Each one of the Trinity, all three of them have a part in our life. As we look back at the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus said, go, he continues in speaking to you and to me through his holy word. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of of the age. In that verse, Jesus is talking to you. Jesus is talking to me. He's telling us that we are to learn and teach the truths that Jesus has given to us. We find these truths in the Bible. Our Holy Scripture, our, our guide to life, that is why it is so imperative for us to daily read and study God's holy word. It gives us the pathway for our lives. As we seek the Holy Spirit to live in our heart and lead our life, can we be assured that God's presence will be with us to the very end of the age? And we can be assured of that because scripture tells us it's another promise that has been given to us that I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always. Claim this promise for your life each and every day, especially in those times when you feel, can I really go on? Is it life worth living? Where am I to go from this point forward? Let Jesus direct 
our paths. And he will definitely do that for us. Let us pray. Jesus, you have directed us to go. May each of us be found in communion with Jesus daily in our life. Help us to follow your leadership as we walk daily in your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. At this time, I want to ask those that are present here with us this morning to prepare your hearts in prayer while Joanna plays as we prepare for the sacrament of Holy Communion. And I will direct my thoughts to those online here. We thank you so much for being a part of our service this morning. And we just pray that the Lord has spoken to us and to you during this time together. And we just pray that uh, as you go forward, that you too can be willing to follow Jesus and share your words with him and your lives with him as he directs your paths. And we look forward to seeing you again next week and uh, be willing to share this with others that you come in contact with. Thank you.